If you're of Norwegian descent, I've just published a new book I think you might be interested in. It explains all the planning and emotions an immigrant had to go through back in the late 19th and the early 20th centuries. It tells the story of Kerry Kirkheide Thorson. And the question is, first, why did this young lady leave Norway in 1903? And also, why did she head for Minneapolis, Minnesota? What was it about Minneapolis that attracted her? And finally, what was life like in Minnesota back in the early 1900s? My name is Paul Arneson, and um, I'm the co-author of my grandmother's book um, that she wanted called, I Couldn't Milk Another Goat. By the way, I don't usually wear my glasses on my head like that, but uh, I noticed there was such a glare that you couldn't see me very well in my eyes, so uh, you'll have to put up with this. If I need them, I at least I'll know where to find them if I have to read something here. But the story is, a, I thought it would be fun to write. She wanted to write this story about her travels to America and what she how she experienced Minneapolis in the early 20th century and uh, what her family and her went through from 1903 really until 1974 when she passed. Uh, she was a, a tremendous lady with a great memory and a penchant for writing in her journals. She loved to do that and cut out newspaper clippings and from the Minneapolis paper and just uh, because she thought that would help her remember things. So we sat down together for about five years. It, uh, it started in 69 and went all the way till she close to where she passed away in 74 and she was quick the whole time. Quick of mind, quick of memory and uh, just loved to tell stories of Norway. There was a guilt behind leaving Norway, in a way, I think many immigrants have that feeling, that they were kind of giving up on their home country. And But if, if you read the book, um, you'll see why she made the decision to go and why so many people did. It was tough to make a living. Uh, Norway doesn't have a lot of arable land, a lot of good, good soil to raise crops. And uh, it's very mountainous, obviously, and uh, so it was just a tough way to, to live back in those days. Fishing was good, but you had to live on the coast for that, really, and not everyone can live on the coast. So uh, it was a great time together, 69 to 74. Uh, we, we laughed and we cried and we listened to music of old Norwegian songs on records and it was just a good way to do it. One of the reasons I wrote this book with her uh, is to encourage people to sit down with your parents and your grandparents uh, and, and talk about their background. Because your ancestors, you know, I mean, your progeny, your kids, your, your children and, and their children will appreciate it, I think. Uh, I, I hope and I know my family appreciates this book and I and. I hope you will, too. Hey, guys. Jenna from the Flip Flop Barnyard here. I'm getting ready to milk Gertie, and I wanted to just give you guys a little how-to on milking a cow. Same technique can be used for goats. So, first thing I do is I get... Uh, I bring a bucket out and I actually fill it with hot water so that by the time I'm out here it's still pretty warm. I don't want to use a cold rag on Gertie's udder. I don't think she would appreciate that. Alright, this is how I clean her udder. I just take this rag and get it's warm water. And this helps her let down too. And I just kind of wipe all around. Up here you want to get all the dirt, manure, and hair off so it doesn't get in your milk. And then I clean the teat really good. I I'm going to make sure there's no debris left on it. Alright, and now we're ready to milk. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of squirts to just check her milk and uh, make sure that there's nothing off about it. 
I think a lot of people probably use a little cup to do this, but I just kind of squirt it on her hoof and make sure it's flowing well and there's just no clumps or anything. And it's about three squirts. Everything looks okay to me. So I place my bucket. And the first thing you do when you go to milk is you're going to take your thumb and your index finger and you're going to grasp at the top of the teat. I'm pretty much pinching it off at the top to hold all the milk in the teat canal. Then I'm going to take my other fingers and squeeze the milk out just like that. And you're just going to continue to do that. You don't want to tug on it or pull on it. Or you just want to be firm but gentle. So we're going to continue to do this until it's completely milked out. All right, I have been milking into this two quart bucket and I've got it about two thirds of the way full. The reason I'm milking to this is because it's easier to milk into and also um, if she were to kick it or something and spill it, I wouldn't lose all my milk. I would just lose what was in this bucket. We pour into our larger pail and it is lined with a strainer. This is actually a paint strainer that I ordered online and I just do that. We'll strain it again into uh, our jars in the house, but I like to just keep it really clean. So I just pour the milk into there and then I'll milk back into this bucket till it's about that full again and keep dumping it in there and then um, that just keeps our milk nice and clean. Alright, you can see it's starting to get empty here. Um, I'm just gonna finish it out. I take my hand up here and kind of make sure I'm pulling all the milk down, squeeze it out. You want to make sure that you completely empty out the quarter because you don't want to risk the cow getting mastitis or um, their production going down. The milk is a supply and demand kind of thing so if you are not taking all the milk her body's not going to think it needs to make as much for you. So on this side we're just milking this back quarter because the calf is still on her and it's, um, she takes care of the front quarter so there's no need to milk it. But you can just see how, whoop, see that's why we milk into a separate bucket. Leave that dirty good girl. You can see how her teat doesn't fill up as quickly. All right, and that's all there is to it. And we'll just pour this milk into our bucket. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions on milking. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, share it with all your friends, hop over to the blog, and sign up for our newsletter at flipflopbarnyard.com. You can keep up to date with everything that's going on around here. Until next time, happy homesteading!